Hello everyone, welcome to EduTab and also welcome to the Government Scheme session. The scheme that we are covering today it is Deen Dayal Upadhyay Grameen Kaushal Yojana. So this scheme was recently in news and that is why we are going to cover it. And but before starting, here's an announcement for all the aspirants who are preparing for central regulatory bodies. We have come up with one-stop solution guide for all the queries that you might be having regarding the organization that you would want to join. For example, if you want to know about the work of RBI, NABARD, and SEBI and how does it contribute to Indian economy, uh, you. can get all the information here along with the different departments that are there what will be your roles and responsibility once you join the organization and etc apart from that after uh, after understanding about the organization you would want to know about the recruitment process right so everything how many phases are there what is the criteria of the examination what are the different uh, types uh, of questions that are asked the previous year cut off syllabus everything has been comprehensively mentioned so do not miss the opportunity you can download these e guide books free of cost from the link that is provided in the description box below so now let's start and see if you look at the syllabus so of course ard in ard component we know how is it important uh, for Uh, if the scheme that we are talking about because we are talking about gramin region here gramin is basically a rural or the village area okay or the rural area so that is why for ard perspective it is very important but even if you look for the economic and social issues because here we are talking about uh, employment we are talking about employment generation and along with that we are also talking about the industrial and labor uh, and uh, and the policy and the sector okay so that is why if you look at from the ard and esi point of view this is important but yes it is more important important from the ard component that is for sure okay uh, why we are starting this so if this is a news of 20 uh, 28th march of 2023 and here you are looking at the union minister uh, shri giriraj singh and union, union minister uh, is of which ministry of rural development okay initiate captive employment initiative under deen dayal upadhyay kaushal yojana okay and g stands for gramin gramin kaushal yojana so now to understand and appreciate this news better first let's understand the basics of it okay if i just dissect the full form what does it mean so see deen dayal upadhyay uh, he was a, an indian politician so Uh, after his name, this particular scheme has been named. And if we talk about Gramin Kaushal Yojana, so Gramin is basically rural region. Okay, Kaushal means uh, Kaushal. It means your uh, skills. Okay, and Yojana means your uh, scheme. Okay, so this particular scheme it talks about providing skill. So skill development we are talking about, and here we are talking in the rural areas. Okay, so basically this scheme is for them. And there is a brief history that I would want you all to know about this. Okay, so Din Dayal and to the Gramin Kaushal Yojana initially. see this particular scheme or component it is part of your national rural livelihood mission and i must tell you this is very important from the examination point of view this scheme so next time uh, when we will do a scheme session we will do on this only okay because recently rbi also launched some circular on it and uh, from uh, uh, from nabard point of view this is part of your syllabus okay so next we will cover that but initially see this name uh, uh, nrlm national rural livelihood mission that was later on changed but initially the name of this particular scheme it was your uh, here if you looking at is swarna jayanti gram swarojgar yojana okay initially the name of nrlm was this and under that there was a special project component and basically this ddu gky that we will study gramin uh, kaushal yojana it was later on renamed such but initially they, we already had this scheme uh, since 20, uh, 2004 okay when this was initially launched but under that it was under special projects of your swarn jayanti gram swarojgar yojana later on first of all this uh, swarn jayanti gram uh, gram swarojgar yojana it was named to nrlm changed to nrlm and why i am saying and why am, why am i repeating this much because this is uh, your previous year question that what was the Uh, previous name of nrlm okay that is why i am repeating it again so that you can understand and remember it so uh, under swarn uh, jayanti gram swarojgar yojana there was a special component where the rural people uh, the poor rural youth they were pro, uh, they were uh, taught some skills okay but later on this uh, first uh, first of all this uh, sg sy was renamed to nrlm and the special project component then renamed there was some uh, revamping was also done and then again on 25th september 2014 this was renamed and relaunched as what deen dayal upadhyay gramin kaushal yojana okay remember this date 25th november 2014 okay and this skilling program for youth have been re reinforced and reprioritized okay so you cannot say actually the scheme was launched in 2004 which was initially when we talk about the previous component because it was refocused and reprioritized okay to address the need of domestic and global 
called skill requirement so we are providing with the skills under this particular uh, scheme if you talk about or the component the launch year is 2014 we have understood and of course now we know which ministry we are talking about we are talking about ministry of rural development if you talk about the aim so here is to uh, provide the wage employment to the rural youth so here you have to keep in mind we are talking about rural youth yes we are talking about it but we are talking about the poor rural youth here it is very important this scheme is not for an everybody it is for only the poor youth okay and there is a eligibility criteria on also but we will first understand the objective and type of scheme so there are two objective the first objective is to cater the uh, career aspiration of ru uh, rural youth what does it mean it means that of course uh, youth would want to have some career uh, uh, for themselves to have a good livelihood or a proper livelihood right so when they will get skill under this particular component of course the their career opportunity will increase because they are skilled laborers right along with that it uh, this particular scheme also talk about diversity to the income of rural families what does it mean see particularly under this particular scheme there are uh, 80 around approx 80 sectors in which skills have been provided what does it mean this scheme does not only talks about providing skill but also providing with the diversified job options why because in this uh, the people uh, they will be trained for various types of job and how this will be selected first of all a counseling will be done uh, so they will uh, the counselor will talk to the youth they will understand where uh, in which job they will be best suitable okay and in that case they will suggest that you should apply for this this particular skill course and then youth they will apply okay and if even if the youth feels like that he does not fit here even though proper counseling has been done and then only the work has been assigned but if the youth feels like uh, this is not for him he can uh, withdraw from the particular skill program okay but uh, it should be done within 10 days because after that that uh, the group uh, the training group that will be freezed okay so uh, they will have diversified option and if you talk about type of the scheme so see we have understood the gramin kaushal yojana it is part of your nrlm right and because nrlm is a cent uh, centrally sponsored scheme that is why this particular is a uh, center sponsored scheme okay eligibility criteria if you talk about so we know rural booth uh, the rural uh, poor youth we are talking about but here there is a cr criteria that is from 15 to 35 so if you belong to age group of 15 to 35 and you are a poor rural youth you are eligible for this particular uh, mission okay under this particular mission but there are still some category uh, for the, uh, for them some this age leverage has been given and uh, uh, and what is that particular category so that particular category is if you are a women candidate or you belong to pvtg so we have al already understood what is pvtg in uh, in few sessions back right your uh, particularly vulnerable tribal groups if you have not watched the session you can watch uh, from the our playlist of government schemes uh, who are physically disabled okay who are transgender and other special groups like rehabilitated bounded labor victims of trafficking manager uh, manual scavengers transgender for them hiv positive person for them this age limit of 25 is, uh, 35 is extended to 10 more years and now it is 45 years so for if you belong if somebody belongs to special category uh, till 45 years they can apply under the scheme but if they are normal uh, poor rural youth for example i belong to general category but i am poor then i am eligible only till 35 years okay and if i am a male because for women it is still 45 okay so i hope you understand that these are the special groups for them the category is still 45 uh, and but if you look at all overall elig eligibility any poor uh, rural youth it is eligible if they belong to 15 to 35 now how will be decided that the if the person is poor or not so under nrlm there is a participatory identification of poor criteria so under that they have some uh, criteria criteria so if any person uh, fits into that if they have bpl card maybe or uh, uh, if they belong to manrega category uh, they are manrega active labor and they have at least 15 days of work in the past one year there are some of the criteria if they suit in that so it means they are they belong to that poor rural youth category okay so that will be uh, done by the participatory intelligence of poor uh, whatever criteria is there talking about implementation model so there will be various um, in, uh, b various implementation unit that will look at one at the national level one at the state level and one at the ground level right so at the national level we have national unit okay at the rural uh, development ministry only and what will it do it will act as a policy making whatever policy that needs to be made technical support that needs to be appointed and all the uh, facil uh, facility that will be provided it will be done by the national unit uh, at the national level okay then comes at the uh, then comes the 
दीनदयाल उपाध्याय ग्रामीण कौशल योजना स्टेट मिशन विच विल प्रोवाइड इंप्लीमेंटेशन सपोर्ट इन पर्टिकुलर स्टेट्स बट इफ वी टॉक अबाउट एट द ग्राउंड लेवल देन द प्रोजेक्ट इंप्लीमेंटेशन एजेंसी विल एक्चुअली एग्जीक्यूट द प्रोग्राम थ्रू प्रोवाइडिंग स्किल एंड प्लेसमेंट प्रोजेक्ट सो नॉट ओनली वी हैव अंडरस्टूड वन मोर थिंग दैट नॉट ओनली स्किल विल बी प्रोवाइडेड बट बट प्लेसमेंट विल ऑल्सो बी गिवन अंडर दिस नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट की फीचर्स आई हैव जस्ट एक्सट्रैक्टेड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट वन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी अंडर द स्कीम द एम इज टू Uh, enable poor and marginalized to access benefits okay so basically what will be done it is a demand led skill training what does it mean demand what is the demand in the society it's not like that only one specific skill has been provided to all the youths and now they have been again uh, they uh, they are been sent to the competition among themselves only that who will get the job so it is skill training demand based okay whatever demands that are different demands that are in the society not only at the national level but international level also at no cost to the rural poor and uh, uh, poor and no money will be taken from them if we talk about inclusivity uh, we have understood some of the criteria they will uh, they uh, they can apply for uh, even if they have more age uh, than the assigned right so here there are some mandatory number of uh, students from different category also so what is the mandatory coverage of socially disadvantaged group so see we know any poor can participate belong belonging to general category or any category right but there are still some reservation for them for sc st 50% off the training group the particular group the particular batch that will be trained of them 50% should be uh, it is encouraged to have 50% sc st other minorities obc or other minorities 15% and women to be 33% of the total batch okay but it does not mean that general Uh, people the general poor youth will not be eligible or they will not be given a preference it just these will be the, the seats have been reserved for them so that uh, because they are socially disadvantaged okay shifting emphasis from training to career progression okay so second and these two means the same thing uh, here first of all whatever be the skill that had been provided along with that there uh, those will be related to how you can actually get a uh, you can get a job by providing skill and then there are also various other factor for example computer how to run a computer how to uh, do all these things will also be taught to them so that they even have career progression what does it mean it's not only they have got some skill and now they they are in, in uh, they are doing any job but also to provide them with additional skills and tasks to uh, to so that they can even progress in their career also and in fact for the foreign placement the under the scheme you are given uh, much uh, much of the uh, skills are provided for that then greater support for placed candidates now once you are placed after that also post uh, placement support is also provided under the scheme you are given with some money we are going to understand in a while but yes you are given with some financial support so that you can establish in a new place if you are going to foreign you will get some extra money all these things will be Uh, given under the particular scheme okay uh, proactive approach to build placement partnership so it's said because see if you are providing skills you can't just leave like that because uh, having skill does not guarantee a job so under this scheme what is done uh, because see some people will perform very good but some people even if they've joined the particular this workshop under under the particular scheme it's not necessary that they will put efforts right so that is why uh, it's guaranteed that 75% of the trained candidates will be provided with job after completing the Uh, completing the workshops that are being attended under the particular scheme okay that are provided under the scheme so here you have to perform really well if you want a uh, full uh, you you want a job okay enhancing the capacity of implementation partnership what does it mean so basically new training service providers are always added and in fact the news that we are talking about captive employer that that is also associated this particular key feature and in fact see after uh, after training under the particular scheme you you uh, various partners they have for example they have cafe coffee day uh, they have reliance all these you know all these names that you must have heard in daily life all these have also uh, joined their hands under the scheme so that uh, the skilled labors they can get uh, get uh, they can go to a particular good company and not only we are focusing on the national level but in some areas a uh, special focus is, is been given with two names so uh, himayat is the uh, same type of means uh, the characteristic of this himayat will be more or less similar to gramin kaushal yojana only there are additional benefits but we don't have to go for a state scheme we don't have to go deep down but himayat is for jammu kashmir so regional focus special focus are for the two areas one is himayat jammu and kashmir ke liye another one is roshni this is for the northeast region and 27 uh, left wing extremist district okay for their roshni scheme is there if we talk about some other key features so it talks about a national 
portal was launched in 2016 so that there is a there is less hassle for the registration under the uh, the implement uh, program implementation uh, agency for them there should be less hassle that is why a particular portal was launched now we told that they will be given employment as well so how much so minimum salary of 6000 per month will be provided under the scheme to the skilled youth who was given employment and 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 in fact this is for the uh, if you are uh, working at the national level or the regional level okay but you have attained some skill that was required in foreign and now you are going to foreign in that case up to so rupees 500 dollar approx so that will be in indian rupees inr that will be around 30000 per month will be provided if you are being selected uh, for the foreign work and for uh, indian the so minimum of 6000 you will at least get okay so and again remember this is minimum we are talking about uh, another thing that we have to inform that yes we have already discussed that no person uh, no money will be taken from you for registration for uh, getting the certificate for even uh, giving the examination because of course they will first take examination if they want to give you uh, uh, the certificate of uh, completion right so uh, in any of the step there will be no money taken but it's not for free of course they the government if they are subsidizing 100% cost of course they would want something in return so they want two things first of all uh, if we talk about the attendance it should not be lower than 50% if it is lower than 50% the person will not be eligible for the final assessment and certification so first of all you have to take this criteria because then only uh, you will actually get to learn something right and secondly the minimum marks of 70% in the final exam you need to pass it okay so two uh, they are 100% providing it for free but there are two uh, the, the two criteria also that they have set or they expect it from you that uh, minimum attendance should not be lower than 50% and the minimum uh, mark should be 70% to pass the examination okay if we talk about close uh, post placement support so we know that 6000 minimum salary you are going to get for the job but apart from that because you would might have to relocate to some new area right so for that also rupees additional rupees 1000 per month is given for certain period what are the cases let's look at that so that you can actually settle to a new place okay for so for relocation uh, uh, some money is spent right so 1000 per month will be given for the period of two months in case within the district of domicile so from wherever you uh, you have the domicile if you are within the district only so for two months you'll get 1000 okay for settlement if you are within the state what does it mean a particular state has many districts right so if you are from the if you are in the same district only uh, for example i mean uh, for example if i live in dehradun right so in dehradun only if some uh, in some any farther place maybe if i if i am there if i am now i have been relocated there my work is there then in that case i'll get only 1000 but for example from dehradun i was shifted to tihri now i am in the same state only tihri gadwal but i am in the different district okay so in that case for 3 months uh, this uh, uh, money support will be given and 6 months in case of placement happened outside the state of domicile if it is outside now i have been uh, relocated to uttar pradesh madhya pradesh right then in that case for 6 months i'll be provided with the money okay talk about duration so this we are talking about training will be given and all this for for how much time so there are see two categories one is off-site training what is on-site training what's the difference Offsite job or offsite training means in the classroom where you are given theories, we are be provided with, uh, with uh, you know, with charts and with PPTs, you are being prepared uh, how things happen. And on site job, it means, or on job training, it means that you are actually practically doing work and then you are practically gaining knowledge, okay? So, in case of, uh, uh, in in such cases, especially if you look at the offsite also, uh, there are three months program, okay? So, you can enroll in three months program where you have to cover 756 hours, you can uh, enroll for six months nine months and 12 months okay training courses there are different types and is it part-time full-time so usually most of them were full-time but now the government they have come up with the part-times one also and uh, so because so that if people uh, for example if they are uh, in their 12th standard because the age group is 15 to 35 right so if they are in 12th standard they are in graduation so they can uh, they can work for the longer duration for example what does it mean it means that here basically more than the months here you have to cover the hours okay so you have to cover hours and you you are given much a longer time span so that you if you skip the classes someday you can actually uh, you can uh, get those hours uh, by working some extra day or by learning some other days okay uh, this was the th these uh, th uh, different types we have talked about the offsite also and even the on the job training is also part of this training and here also 30 days for three months so here you're looking at that in three months course you have to at least go for 30 days so this you can manage in 
थ्री मंथ्स राइट सिमिलरली फॉर सिक्स मंथ्स सिक्सटी डेज फॉर नाइन मंथ्स नाइन्टी डेज आई आई होप यू आर गेटिंग वट डज इट एक्चुअली मीन बिकॉज हेव वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट मेनी मंथ्स हैव बिन गिवन सम डेज हैव बिन गिवन सो दैट यू कैन एक्चुअली इफ यू आर डूइंग इफ यू आर इंगेज इन समथिंग एल्स ऑल्सो यू कैन एक्सट्रैक्ट टाइम फॉर देयर ऑल्सो बिकॉज सी दीज स्किल डेवलपमेंट दीज आर फॉर योर हायर गुड राइट बट इफ यू आर ऑलरेडी इंगेज विद योर स्टडीज और मे बी सम अदर वर्क मे बी विमेन फॉर एग्जाम्पल विमेन दे माइट हैव दर हाउस होल्ड वर्क राइट और एनी सच कंडीशन कैन अप्लाई राइट सो फॉर देम देर आर different types of courses that we are looking at so this was all you have to remember from this particular scheme again now if you look at indicates captive employment initiative now under this uh, what will happen paving the way for greater industrial participation in skilling rural youth so here we are talking about on job training also right so industrial more industrial participation for them for them we have comp, uh, captive employment so that more and more industry people they can come and train these poor rural youth and these in turn will get a job and a good lifestyle right i have added the link here so you can uh, click on this link and you can read the whole news if you want to and there are some other uh, other data also that has been provided and can be asked in examination so that is all in this uh, here's an homework so we have to uh, i have added two question today question number 1 and question number 2 okay and these are the topics of the last session yati said the right answer tarun said the right answer rajeep said the right answer then we have drunk or saying the right answer rachit said the right, uh, right answer Urmi Mala saying the right answer. Impana saying the right answer. Somnath saying the right answer. Odita, you are going to get the PDF from the tele from our Telegram channel. You can join that, and from there you can get the PDF. And Tarun, okay, I have taken your suggestion. So see the next class that we will have on Monday, and Monday it will be first of May. So first of May, I'll come live at one p.m. and we are going to have a revision session. Okay, I hope that's fine. And in this revision session, we are going to cover for last uh, how much months should we take for last three months? Okay, last three months, how whatever schemes that we have covered uh, of all the last three months, we'll do and see. Uh, even if you are preparing for further examination, I want to tell you that last three months, me, jo bhi schemes cover hui hai, they will again come in news only. right so you might skip the news but at least a static you should know so of last three months we'll do uh, uh, on monday that is first 20, uh, first may live at 1 pm okay so that is all in this video if you like the video kindly subscribe to our youtube channel and also you can join our, our telegram channel from the link that is present in the description box below and from there you can get the pdf of this lecture okay so uh, yeah Uh, so thank you everyone we'll meet again with another uh, another session until then all the very best for examination and thank you